The equipment required for the CAMPRO biopsy method is very similar to that already used for transrectal biopsies. The standard sterile area consists of swabs, antiseptic wash, biopsy cassettes to receive the samples and post-procedure dressings. A linear transducer endocavity probe is used for the procedure and is available in any unit that performs prostate biopsies. A 10 mil syringe with 1% lignocaine is kept on the tray as is a 10 mil syringe with sterile saline. An orange needle is also required. A standard prostate biopsy gun deploying an 18 gauge needle is used. The camp probe device consists of an integrated needle for simultaneous local anesthetic delivery as the device is advanced and a sheath within which the coaxial cannula can be used to perform the biopsies. Here the local anesthetic syringe is shown being attached to the camp probe device ready for insertion. To ensure lubrication within the cannulation system approximately 2 to 3 mils of saline is flushed through before the anesthetic syringe is attached. The patient is fully informed beforehand of the procedure in the standard manner and a single dose of antibiotics is administered orally. No other patient prep is required. Suppositories may be used if required and self-administered by the patient three to four hours beforehand. For the procedure, a reclining bed with a removable lower section is required and with stirrups for the patient's legs. The position is standard lithotomy with no extension required. Patients are asked to hold the external genitalia up onto the abdomen with a slight degree of tension and a sterile drape is placed over the lower abdomen and if necessary separate drapes over the thighs. The perineal area is thus exposed ready for the procedure. The area is prepared with antiseptic wash and a preliminary scan is performed using the linear transducer probe inserted into the rectum to visualize the prostate gland and the depth from the perineal surface. A point approximately 1.5 cm up from the anal verge in the midline is marked and 1.5 cm to the right and left of this point laterally. Approximately 1 mil of local anesthesia is injected using the orange syringe to numb the skin. Using the ultrasound probe, the assembled cam probe device with an attached 10 mil local anesthetic syringe is then inserted at the marked points. If there is any resistance or the skin feels particularly resilient, a small stab incision using a blade can be used on the pre-anesthetized skin. As the cam probe is inserted under direct vision, structures can be visualized including the subcutaneous fat, pelvic floor musculature and the apex of the prostate. Patient feedback is also helpful to assess if any further local anesthesia needs to be introduced in specific areas. Approximately 5 to 6 mils of local anesthesia is required per side of insertion and to keep the procedure comfortable. There is no requirement for any pudendal nerve blocks, wide infiltration or regional anesthesia. Once the cannula is placed just addition to the apex of the prostate, some further local anesthesia is inserted at the apical junction. Once deployed, the syringe and inner delivery needle is removed, leaving the cannulation probe ready for prostate biopsies. A standard biopsy needle, 18 gauge, is inserted through the cannulation device with no need for any extra insertion points. Under ultrasound guidance, the cannula is then directed to different areas of the prostate for samples to be taken. At all times, visualizing the end of the needle and the direction of travel through manipulation of both the linear ultrasound probe and the biopsy cannula. The free hand movement that the cam probe afford means that apical areas of the prostate as well as basal and lateral areas are easily accessible. However, if the position of the cannula needs to be altered, this can be easily achieved by reinserting the local anesthetic needle back in and reinserting the cannula and if necessary deploying a little more local anesthesia. In our pilot trials we have found that separate skin punctures are almost never required because of the malleability of the perineal skin and subcutaneous tissues. Occasionally withdrawal beyond the pelvic musculature may be necessary in very large prostates. Once all biopsies are taken the biopsy needle is removed and the cannula withdrawn and the standard plaster or simple dressing is applied. The procedure is then repeated on the contralateral side. After the procedure, the patient is sat up and observed for up to an hour to ensure full recovery before discharge. Procedural time is generally in the region of 20 to 30 minutes 
and the entire hospital visit is approximately two hours. Post-procedure antibiotic protocols follow the unit's standard policy and in Cambridge this involves three days of oral antibiotics.